Okay, well, we're just going to get going here. Hello, everybody. I hope you had a great week. It's Saturday morning here in the Philippines, and we're looking forward to a relaxing weekend. I also want to welcome you to my very first podcast live stream. And just to give you a quick idea, I'm planning to broadcast every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 8 a.m. Saturday mornings here in the Philippines. I uh, wanted to give you guys a chance to participate in this discussion, and my plan is to invite my plan is to invite smart guys to share important knowledge that is relevant to living abroad, whether here in the Philippines or other countries which is the perfect segue to introduce you to my very first guest on this very first live stream, Mr. Marty Fenton. Uh, Marty grew up in, let me go ahead and bring you up, <laughs> in central New York, just south of the Canadian border. He joined the United States Navy and retired in 1996 as a chief petty officer after retirement he has worked as a human resource consultant and teacher of English as a second language. Marty has lived in the Philippines twice, first from 1983 to 1987 at Subic Bay, and then uh, lately or recently since 2017 in Manila. Marty and his Filipino wife have two young children. Okay. And today we're going to be talking about retirement and Social Security and get into some of the benefits, how they work, when to register, and stuff like that. I'm not quite yet retirement age myself, so believe me when I say I'll be learning as much or more than you will. And just before I turn it over to Marty, feel free to drop your questions in the comments. We will, be, we will be addressing those as we go. And if you're watching this after the live broadcast, please feel free to leave comments and we'll get back to you. So with all of that out of the way, Marty, you told me a while back that we should not wait until we are 62 or 65 to register for Social Security. So, and I would not have known anything about that. Can you explain how we begin the whole Social Security process? And by the way, hello. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, well, the first uh, is, is if, I'm assuming if you if you live still in America or elsewhere that and you're not yet. Um, drawing Social Security, the first recommendation I would make is go to ssa.gov, very easy, and get a forecast. So you can uh, set up an account in there called the My Social Security. Do that on your own. Uh, one warning I will give you is when you set up that account, make very, very sure that you keep track of your passwords because if you lose them, mm. government um, websites are very difficult to retrieve passwords when you have forgotten passwords. So please set that up okay. and you can get a forecast and it's pretty accurate. It will tell you, even if you're only 55, it will tell you what it will do is it's going to give you a schedule uh, based on when you retire. The very earliest right now that most people can retire is age 62. Now I'm talking about retirement benefit, social security, uh, Disability Social Security is an entirely different matter. Maybe we could do some discussion, or if you have a question, I'll, I'll tell you what I can, but you can apply for that at any age. But here, if you're applying for, or you even plan to apply at age 62 or later, uh, what they're going to do in that forecast is they're going to tell you, if you retire at 62, you will get X amount, and it will increase if you wait. However, if you are not married and you have no minor children and you die before age 67 or whatever your your maximum benefit ages it, it stays in the united states treasury the other thing i i will tell you about the ages that if you were born after 1960 your age draw the maximum the highest amount that you can will be a higher age than people who were born prior to 1960 and it will increase with every year later than after you were born so the the younger you are now the longer you're going to have to wait if you want to wait to get the full social security it's entirely is, something is six i would just go ahead 
is 65 is that i mean is is 65 is the age for medicare um okay for the most part most people can get a social security pension at 62 and you can apply for that six months prior to your 62nd birthday but you can get a forecast anytime um and it's going to be based on how much you contributed the longer you contributed and the more you contributed the higher that monthly amount will be but also if you wait past 62 it will go up and you'll see that it it goes up quite quite a bit so if you're already over 62 and you think you can hold out until 67 uh you know you might you'll see when you see your own forecast that that's probably a better idea now why social security is important is that if you do not marry a filipina and get a 13a visa like, like gail has if you try to come here on a retirement visa you must have must i mean you must have u.s income that goes into a philippine account or they simply will not grant you that that visa so um and folks let me let me just uh just a quick uh mention on the 13a what what he's referring to is the srv which is essentially and correct me if i'm wrong marty but basically the srv is intended for guys who may or may not be married to a filipino national uh but served in the military uh and there's different tierings for you know the srv process and getting that permanent resident visa via that program the 13a is really i mean it's directly related to uh, a foreigner being married to a filipino national and that 13a is a fairly simple it just really is contingent on being married to a filipino national so uh essentially the srv and the the 13a provide the same permanent resident visa benefits but just different programs based on your your status so uh yeah okay well, now let me jump in a little bit on the application process because th- that also can vary if you are in the u.s you will apply in the u.s and you go to any social se- most of it can be done online but the things you might need to do if they need documentation or something you may have to go to a social security office there in almost every city and your application will be processed there by the social security administration and then uh your your deposits will depend on what date of the month you were born <laughs> they pay them out in three different wednesdays the first one is the second wednesday of the month so if you're born between the first and the tenth you'll get your deposit on the second wednesday of the month and 11 to 20 is the third and then the final so if you were born at the end of the month <laughs> you know, right, right. you're gonna have to wait till the end of the month to get paid now that's if you start your social security in the u.s if you are already living in the philippines if you come here on any type of a visa and you approach the age of 62 and you need to apply you will not be able to apply in the u.s when i talk to you they uh it's just you have to apply with the social security office that's at the u.s embassies here Um, we have a couple of them but you 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 have to now i will warn you that since covid has started most of those social security employees who are who are filipinos they're u.s government employees but they're filipinos most of them work from home and u.s embassy and consulate services have been very very difficult slow and you need to be persistent so if you are able to apply before you come here uh it will be an advantage but there is an advantage if you do apply um while you're over here you all foreign payments for people who live abroad whose social security started while they were abroad get paid on the third of the month period (laughs) Okay. <laughs> no matter okay. what day of the okay. month you were born so that's a that's a cool thing um well, let me let me you ask you a quick pain. question on now you mentioned a couple of things you mentioned that if you're already in the philippines like in my case um uh, you can't work with anyone in the u.s uh, does that include online applying online or am i strictly uh, limited to having yeah, the way to go to the U.S. embassy is you're gonna, you're gonna go 
to the uh, Social Security Administration office is at U.S. consulates. So if you're in Manila or Cebu or one of the consulates, uh, they're going to have an office. Now, once upon a time, several years ago, I actually physically went to that office. But until the COVID things change, um, there is they simply don't see very many people at U.S. embassies anymore and until okay. we get back to something. I mean, most transactions are done online, on the phone, or whatever. So here's the way it worked for me. I can only describe this. Uh, I turned 62 last August. And I applied six months prior to that by writing an email. They have an email address at the U.S. Embassy, at any U.S. Embassy in the world. And they will set up an appointment, a phone appointment, call you, and it will take about 45 minutes. And it's fairly elaborate. Uh, but they have already most of the information that they need to set up your account. They need You're going to have to be prepared to give them an account number where you want the deposit they do not mail checks social security gave that up many many years ago you cannot get a right. physical check well, that's and if you live overseas that's my they, they, there's a, a alternative of a debit card that you can use in america but they will not do that overseas you have a u.s account or a philippine account no, there are some banks that allow it um, and you can get a list uh, from from them from social security but they will ask you you know for address and things like that and um, where the money's going to go this may that'll be done this may be six months prior this may be you know getting and, into um, too much granular detail but uh you know if if i'm banking i know a lot of the guys that that follow the channel uh you know do have uh, bank accounts in the philippines or don't i me personally i'd I do have a BPI savings accounts. You know, we don't really use it that much. Yeah, I know that BPI you know, my is one. Um, my preference is to actually, few, uh, I like depositing everything into my U.S. bank account. Uh, so if I'm, yeah. if I'm living in the Philippines, I'm applying for SS in the Philippines, can I still deposit my check into my American or my U.S. bank account? Or do you're you know? good. Yeah, you can... Um, Okay. You can have it go to a it's US a routing account. Num- um, there's it's a one routing type number of visa, the SRRP, the retirement visa, they will require that some pension, it doesn't have to be Social Security, but you have to have a minimum uh, pension. I, I believe it's a thousand US dollars right now, but we have a new right. president, so there's no telling what <laughs> will happen. The retirement visa right. um, will require that you put a, a deposit in. in um, in a Philippine bank account. And, um, yeah. You know, you well, you know, Social Security uh, or if you have other some, pensions. You know, when we talk about visas, I, I kind of perk up because this is an area that I've really seen a lot on. Uh, and so, again, for guys, SRV, what, basically what it boils down to is the Philippines, the Bureau of Immigration, they want to know that you've got skin in the game. They you can't just come yeah. over here and say, "Hey, I'm going to live here permanently." Blah blah blah. Can I get a visa? It's it. it there's got to be yeah. skin in the game. The 13A is that you're married to a Filipina national. If the SRRV is financial skin in the game, they want they want you investing uh, yeah. into the Philippines economy. So yeah. that's why I'm sure that's why that that requirement. It is uh, why. For, I mean, Gail and yeah. many other. Um, YouTubers here in the Philippines have addressed the issue that uh, you need to plan before you come here. And coming here without any source of income is a very bad idea. Um, yep, yep. Very bad. Yep. Just just plan and plan. And there's just long checklists of things. But, you know, uh, you got to make sure you have health insurance of some sort um, and mm-hmm. income. Those are the two major things. If you come here without that, you're not, especially if you're older, you're just asking for trouble. Um, Right. It's a side note thing. This is unrelated to Social Security, but Gail and others have mentioned this, is that this is not like America. If you go to a hospital, you must pay upfront cash on the barrel head to receive any treatment whatsoever. If yep. you do not pay, yep. if you do not have money to pay for it or, or, or a Philippine, you know, a, a, a health insurance that actually covers everything like some do in America, you're not getting treated. I, I, yeah. Trust everybody well, when they tell you that. 
<laughs> Believe. Further clear fur, further clarification is they will treat you. They will admit you and they, they will treat you, but you're not leaving until you pay the bill. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, but what I'm saying is, if you expect Western medicine here, uh, you have to right. pay for it, and you have to be prepared to do that. And if you're not, that's correct. And you run into health problems here, you're, you're just asking for trouble, um, because you can become destitute yeah. here very fast um, with, with those kind of issues. So, your Social Security. Um, are we ready to talk about children? <laughs> I, that was going to be my next question because as you, you have know, any uh, questions there? Small, there, there I think so questions? far I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay. Okay. So, uh, so in reviews for uh, folks who have just tuned in, basically we're talking about uh, social security living abroad uh, and, you know, the process, you know, when to apply. Uh, and by the way, that's, that's actually a question that I had. Uh, you know, if I'm 56 years old, and you said something about it's never too early to register. Uh, is registration application or is registra- Is that two different things or one and the same? All right. Um, yeah, let's, let's talk about children. Uh, it's really difficult for a lot of people. It's people. I, I was shocked when I learned it. But if you come over here, you, you find a Filipina, a young Filipina in particular, um, likelihood is she's going to want to have children. If you have children, those children are entitled to uh, American citizenship and it, they can get a social security number. And with that, they can get social security benefits um, based on your uh, monthly payment. However, <laughs> it is not automatic. It's not, you don't just call them and they start, uh, they would no matter how many children you have, whether it's one or five, you, they will get 50% of your monthly payment until their 18th birthday. Now, okay. in order to accomplish that, you must get them social security numbers. That can only be done through that same social security office at the U.S. consulates. And Correct. you must get that before 179 days. If you do not get it before 179 days, you must do a report of birth abroad of a U.S. citizen and get them U.S. passports before the Social Security Administration will issue them numbers. And they will not get any benefits whatsoever, not only now, but when you die. They will get nothing if you do not register them as U.S. citizens born abroad. Uh, maybe we could do well, sometime and, and, an entire podcast on that process, but it is an absolute must. You, your children yeah. are not automatically citizens by birth. You must prove they are your children. Correct. And the embassy is not Correct. there. It's not a difficult process, but it does require no. <laughs> some documentation well, and, the, and, and a trip to the. Yeah. Well, the, the, the problem, the problem that I've run into personally on that, is we we did have a baby in September 2020. She'll be two, mm-hmm. you know, next month. Um, we have not yet been able to register her birth with the U.S. because yeah. of travel restrictions. It, you, it is yeah, is and absolute, it's, it's no, been it's a problem. In, yeah, it's an in person. It's an in person yes. uh, application, and uh, so therefore. With travel restrictions, uh, not to mention the cost, uh, with travel restrictions, we've not been able to make a trip to uh, Manila. Now, I, I've monitored this on an ongoing basis because, uh, you know, the not only for Social Security, but just for, you know, your, uh, uh, what is the income credits, whatever that is on your on your IRS, uh, you know, there's benefits yes. to having your children registered. Uh, That's correct. Know, on Social Security. And yeah, so, uh, they have to have so social I've been security numbers for you to claim them as dependents on your income tax file. That's they must. That's correct, and and there's plenty of benefits. They won't do it to online. Doing that. They won't do it over the phone. It has to be done through the U.S. Consulate's uh, social security office. Now, for me, for me, uh, living in the Central Visayas, uh, I've been monitoring it closely, and it does appear that in the last few months, Cebu, the U.S. Embassy in Cebu, has opened up. To uh, to on you know to in person 
So, uh, so we're we're beginning to plan that process. Uh, Got to put in. You yeah. have to submit the application up front, and then then you set an appointment, and you know you just sort of follow the yeah the, uh, the there checklist. Is but rumor online that the the new president Marcos is going to make uh, some announcements on Monday the first uh, regarding um, various restrictions that he wants to relax or remove or whatever. But we didn't we didn't we don't know what that will be until the, right everything else well let's uh respectful. let's just take a let's take a moment to uh to welcome our our viewers we looks like we have seven or eight viewers at the moment uh if you're just okay. tuning in uh thanks for joining uh this is exciting this is my first uh live stream podcast and we're talking about uh social security and you know those processes for expats living abroad you know i think this is applicable it, pretty much anywhere you live it doesn't it's not specific to the philippines necessarily um and marty and i have become friends in the last few months and he launched into a conversation on one of our many phone calls about these things and me being 56 and not yet retirement age i was kind of amazed at some of the things he was talking about and so we decided uh that this would be valuable information for uh for other guys living here so uh, obviously, you know, this is something I'm going to be looking into, you know, uh, as the years progress, but there's guys out there that may be 60, 61, 62 that are, are, you know, interested in finding out more. So anyway, uh, going back to, I want to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the kids because, um, you kind of went through that fast to let's, let's break it down a little bit more. So a couple of questions, and I'll, I'll just ask you one at a time so you don't have to try to remember what I ask you. But the scenario that you have, I, I have a friend, a, a Phil M family, that are literally in the process of moving to the Philippines as we speak. He has a grown son, he's uh, 18, 19, 20 years old, who will be coming to the Philippines permanently with, with the family. And then they have a young child between him and his Filipino wife. So his social security, when it kicks in, he's going to have a, a, an American born son from a previous marriage, as well as a Phil Am child between him and his Filipino wife. Will they both receive the, the social security payments? Does, will they, will they only receive payments after he passes away or I think I think I know the answer to that question, but once he passes away, they will continue. I think you mentioned 18 years old. So can you just talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, before I go into directly answering questions from the people, I want to just give a disclaimer here that I am not an employee of the Social Security Administration. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm giving you the best information that I know of at this moment, but do not take my word for anything. The, the key place We're just, to answer questions best is ssa.gov or, or an off, a Social Security I'm office. Glad, but um, the I'm answer to the that, question is who receives benefits and when is pretty simple. The only people that will receive any benefits while you are alive are minor children that okay. can extend past age 18 if they are disabled. Uh, but spouses okay. will never get any money until you die. Okay. Um, so that's, that's that. And in order for them to get money when you die, they must have a, uh, you know, they, they, they have to have their own social security number, which can be done. They don't have to become U.S. citizens to do that. Um, there's a yes, there's a yes. non-working um, social security right, number right. that is issued to spouses for that very purpose. But mm -hmm. I will tell you, if they are not U.S. residents, um, it's very it's not likely they're going to get approved. If you marry a Filipina in the Philippines and you never, ever take her to America, the likelihood is that she will not ever be able to receive your social security benefits when you die. There are mm. ways to plan to get her uh, some income when you die. Uh, the one thing I'll put as an aside to this, and this is, I'm not, again, I am not licensed to sell insurance anymore. I was in New York many years ago, but regardless, um, 
the, the one simple thing about life insurance that you need to know is the younger you get it, the cheaper it will be. The longer you wait, the longer you procrastinate to get life insurance, the likelihood is it will be so expensive, you will not be able to afford it. And if you have serious health problems, you probably won't get it at all. Right. So that's something to consider there. So if you if you if you're going to marry somebody, find out from Social Security Administration if she will be eligible for security. If she's not, start planning. There are other resources you can use to plan ahead and get put money aside to get her some uh, retirement income. But okay. for the most part, if you marry her here and you never leave and she never becomes a U.S. resident of some sort, the likelihood of her getting your social security is zero. And guys, as, as, just as to as clarify, just to clarify on that, <laughs> he, he's he, residency and citizenship are two different things. He's, he's just talking about, can you prove a tenured resident in the U S um, in my case, my wife did get her U.S. citizenship. She lived in the U S for five years. So I'm assuming that that would more or less qualify her automatically for, uh, to receive those benefits. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, so guys, uh, quite a few viewers. I'm, ch I'm monitoring the comments. I'm not seeing any, any questions or any comments. Feel free to, uh, to drop us in and we'll address those as we go. Um, so, uh, you mentioned earlier that the kids, and I'm sorry to keep circling back, but these are questions that I'm very curious about. Uh, you said our kids, as as long as they're minors, are you saying that they will get a check of their own? I, 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 I'm yes. not sure I understand right. what if you mean If you have about. minor children, they don't have to be U.S. citizens, but they have to get Social Security numbers, which the best resource to that, though, would be Honestly, there's a million reasons that it's best for you to register yeah. your children as U.S. citizens right, right. born abroad. Because, among other things, when you die, if they never, if that never got done, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to do it as adults. Believe me, I've met many, 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 many adults here who are, um, you know, children of U.S. citizens, and it's it's a challenge uh, because you have right. to prove paternity, and that's best done when you're alive. But in any event, um, let's say you have one minor child here with the Filipina you marry, or, or, even if you're not married, um, then you get a social security number for that, that child uh, in a pass U.S. passport. And they can have both. They can get a Philippine passport mm -hmm. as well. But when you do right. that, um, as soon as social security will need to verify it, you're going to need to submit birth certificate and so on. And then um, they will get... 50% of your monthly payout. So let's say you get okay. 1400 a month. Uh, th that child is going to get 700 a month until his or her 18th birthday. If you have more than one, it's, it's, it's 50% for one or five. It's, there's no increase. Okay. Right, right. Okay, yeah. I got you. Okay. If they are disabled, uh, if they become disabled before age 18, it can be extended for a lifetime. I see. Okay. Okay. Norman Rosario, thanks for your question. Uh, can we use Medicare benefits in the Philippines? Good question. Unrelated to Social Security, except the deduction for is the same. No. Absolutely no. Medicare does mm. not extend outside the U.S. with very, very few exceptions unless you're a government employee or a contractor or something. For, so for the most part, if you come here with no other insurance than Medicare, Medicaid, I'm sorry, Medicare at age 65, um, it, it is best for you to budget to buy insurance here. Uh, at the very mm -hmm. least, there's some very affordable plans that, that will provide yeah. for you catastrophic coverage if you have a heart attack or get cancer or something that you wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. But for the most part, most basic care, if you're healthy, um, you can afford it. It, it, it yeah. Healthcare is yeah. not brutally expensive here, not compared to America. Obviously, again, if you get into surgery or, or, or right. really 
heavy things. But the other thing on that side note, in addition to the money value thing of it that I would I would suggest is if you have long term health problems, retiring here may not be the best choice for you because you simply are not going to get Western health care without living in an area that's going to be probably more than you can afford on Social Security. Um, yeah, there's a yeah. myth that the Philippines is dirt cheap and there are places here that are dirt cheap, but not everywhere. Uh, Makati, right. the, the most expensive area in, in Manila and, and BCG um, are also westernized areas of Manila. Apartments and condos there are every bit as expensive as they would be in San yep. Francisco, Boston or New York City. I'm not joking. Right. Right. I know right. people who live in U.S. dollar, million dollar, one bedroom condos in Makati. So it's not, it's not what yeah. you think. Yeah. Um, can you live in fifth on fifteen hundred dollars a month here? Yes, but not everywhere. But um, right. yeah, right. please, please plan ahead with regard to medical <laughs> coverage. Yeah. Well, that's, and especially as you said, if if you have if you have uh, you know, severe health issues, you know. Uh, can you, you know, I'd like, I can just chime in on this. You, you can get, you can get the healthcare, you can get healthcare in, in the, Philippines. Yeah. that's, that's not the issue. Um, yeah. but you will have so to pay it's... for it and go ahead, go ahead, Marty. Cause if you have serious health if, issues, even if you have some coverage to take care of that, you really have two choices. You've either got to be able to afford to live in the area the more expensive area where those where those Western type of hospitals are, or you've got to travel to them, which if you have poor health, may not be practical either. So, right, you definitely want to plan that. Uh, Norman asked, uh, planning to retire in Philippines, I will have Medicare benefits. Can I use again, Norman? the uh, The answer is no. Medicare will not cover health care in the Philippines. You, you, that's strictly yeah. within the U.S. territories. So, uh, yes, unfortunately, Guam, maybe Guam, but not not the Philippines. Okay. Um, well, are there any other things uh, you've you've more or less covered my curiosities with regard to Social Security? And of course, I'm still a few years away from, uh, you know, even looking at that. Other th other than. Uh, I will look forward to checking out my forecast. I'll I'll take a look and see what that looks yeah. like. But uh, but uh, other than that, I think we've, we've <coughs> covered the topics. Uh, uh, we've only had a couple of the questions come in. So rather than having a bunch of dead air here uh, and us rambling about our, <laughs> um, <laughs> if you can't think of any anything else, Social Security related that might be of interest to. Uh, you know, uh, people looking to move to the Philippines or, or guys who already live in the Philippines, then maybe we'll just wrap it up. Sure. Um, yeah, the other thing, you know, that I would recommend for everybody is um, do your homework. If you want to yeah. come here, one of the first things I would recommend is if you're, if you're connected to some Filipino and you guys are talking and um, like in the case of many people, you want to bring her to America on an F-1 visa. Uh, you must <laughs> come here physically. The, yeah. the, you, the State Department will not approve a visa for somebody you've never physically seen. So you have to come here. Right. But even if you have right. a different plan, even if you think, hey, I want to come over there and live cheap and, and have a nice retirement. And I don't want to get married. I don't want to have a relationship. I just want to live alone and not work anymore, which is a very popular thing to do. And yeah, um, sure. if you want to do that, my recommendation would be get a plane ticket and come over here. Because if you're going to make that plan for the rest of your life, you want to be sure that you really, you know, this suits you. Uh, the weather is yeah. different than many parts of America. The um, Filipinos speak English, but it's not their native language. Uh, there's going to no, be, no. Uh, you know, you're going to have to communicate well, and, and, you with know, people in different way. Culture's different. Um, it's a great culture, but it's... You have to know is it does it suit you or doesn't it um, another place you can I, I start think, though if you want to like, go ahead yeah uh just on on this note uh and i'm glad you brought it up i one of my top questions i mean literally one of my top 10 questions 
that I get is, you know, how do you choose where to live in the Philippines? And and I usually oh. give, you know, a two or two or three bullet points. Uh, you know, number one, as Marty mentioned, if you're hooking up with a Filipina, and this is what I did. I landed, I very literally moved to the city where my wife grew up. I mean, to me, that was a natural first choice because I want to bring up our children with her family. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of guys that say, ah, you know, you, you live too close to the family, blah, blah, blah. So that would be one criteria. Number Another criteria would be health. We're talking about health. If you are, you know, if you do decide to move to the Philippines to take advantage of a lower cost of living, but you have, you know, major health issues, you're going to want to live at least within an hour proximity of a metro, yeah. you know, a major metro area that has the best quality health care. And you don't have to live in Manila. Dumaguete has a, a great health care, you know, uh, but of course, Manila, of course, Cebu, of course, Davao, you know, those are some of the major uh, areas that you can, uh, you know, move at least again in proximity to, uh, to get the best yeah. quality health care. So uh, there's a wide variety, a very wide variety of lifestyles here. And um, yes, the, 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 what, the easiest formula I can give you is the, the less Western lifestyle um, activity, food and, and uh, air conditioning, things like that, the less of that you're willing to give up, the more expensive it's going to be to live here. Um, correct. That's correct. I live walking distance from a mall that has McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Pizza Hut, uh, Panda Express, Cinnabon, Popeye Chicken, Starbucks and all that, but you're not going to, you're not going to live where I live on a thousand dollars a month. Nope. Even nope. alone. Nope. It, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. The place you live in a thousand dollars a month will not have the family that probably have oh, sorry. access to fiber optic <laughs> cable and, or fiber optic yep. internet service and some, some things, you know, you won't be able to buy since you're used to eating, um, the closer to Western lifestyle you want here, the more expensive it's going to be. You know, Marty, <laughs> and this I'm gonna I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna wax philosophical here, but you know, for me, if I if I'm gonna live a hundred percent Western lifestyle, then why move to the Philippines? Uh, you know, it's almost like why? Uh, you know, for me, uh, the city that I'm in is. It's 120,000 population. We don't have an SM mall. We don't have a Robinsons, you know, so, but we do have, we do have fiber, thankfully. But, uh, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm watching, even in the five years that we've been here, I'm watching our little quaint Filipino city evolve. And, and it's like, it's losing its Philippines charm to me. Uh, so, you know, if you there's yeah. so many schools of thought and everybody's is going to be different you know but for me i moved to the philippines because i loved the charm of motor cabs yeah i, I hate jeepneys yeah and there's but i love there's the, things I, that um yeah there's a lot of simple things yeah. that you have to determine for yourself whether or not this is an adjustment you're willing or want to make i'll give you an example we're at the end of July, heading into August. If you live in the Northeast and it's extremely hot and humid and you don't like that, you're not gonna like living here. <laughs> Cause it's pretty much like that here all year long, year round. unless it's raining, Correct. hot and raining, yeah. period. Yeah. And if you're somebody who craves four seasons, you know, and the leaves turning beautiful colors in, in the <laughs> fall and, and the winter experience and all that, you're not gonna get that. It's a tropical island. Right. Our weather is nearly identical yeah. to Hawaii. Um, yeah. And the I think thing is, that, I think it's a little uh, bit hot. You get a little, little test Hawaii, run yeah. of whether or not you like Philippine food, Philippine culture, and Filipinos themselves. Um, you can meet them anywhere. Every hospital mm -hmm. in America has Filipinos working at them. Uh, there's. Yeah. yeah. Even smaller cities have Philippine American, they call them Phil Am, 
um, organizations, you know, right. that it's mostly couples like uh, like like Gail and I have that, that live in America, but they um, they get together and they they may have a you know a, a weekend um, barbecue or something, and you'll get a chance to see if you really like Filipino food, and you're going to hear hear the sounds yeah. of their um, yeah. both their language and their accents and and so on, and if that if you find that great and interesting then it might be worth an investment to buy a ticket and come on over here and check it out. But if it turns you off there, it's going to really turn you off here. That's yeah, my, yeah. for what it's worth. Well, <laughs> it, and I, I'm going to actually and, uh, segue as, as, as we get ready to close out here, I want to do a little bit of a commercial, uh, uh, me personally, and I'm not going to get into the long story, but, uh, I, the way I found my wife was on a online dating was a site called Christian Filipina. And in the last several months, I've actually become an affiliate for Christian Filipina. I really like the setup. Uh, obviously I'm an alumnus of them. So, you know, I'm, I, I have that history, but the reason why I selected oh. them, you know, 11 years ago and the reason why I support you, them. You just and, reminded and me of another them. thing that you have. I'm sorry, you have addressed this before, but um, the Philippines, other than there's a there's a, some areas of the country that are Muslim, but for the most part, it's a predominantly Christian nation, and there are almost yeah. no atheists here. So if you're correct, really correct. if you're not a Christian, you've got to be comfortable and respectful of it, or you're yes. going to really have a, yes. a difficult time with relationships of any kind here. And, and the second thing, right, and this right. is kind of a little weird one, but I've gotten this question from people. Um, you know that tall basketball player in Russia right now? Uh, the mm -hmm. same thing would apply here. We do not have, do not have medical marijuana licenses or any, um, just trust me, you cannot smoke marijuana, eat it, bring it into the country. It is extremely illegal and you could wind up getting killed. Not, not. Yeah. like you know like yeah. executed by a court like police places where you have to go to buy drugs here the police shoot drug dealers with impunity and if you happen to be in the crosshairs yep. absolutely nothing will be done they do not go to yeah. jail for it. it is just the government here um puts the safety of the people especially in the big cities here like manila way above anybody's Yes. personal rights <laughs> that's, so just don't do that's it. a if, great if you if you are if you are reliant on a continuous dose of medical marijuana in the states that approve that this is not the place for you yep 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 don't do it <laughs> well anyway uh or any, yeah, thanks or for any narcotics that. as well if you rely on narcotics for pain management you're going to find that very difficult to get here um and yeah. was yeah. a pharmacist before we met and um they're not generous. We just had a baby last year too, and um, they gave her one pill <laughs> for pain. And the next <laughs> yeah. afternoon, I the next morning, I had to like beg to get him to give her one more. But that was it. It wasn't yeah, like yeah. like if you're getting two hundred Percocets a month, uh, like some people do in America, that's not going to work here. This is not the place. For you. And one thing that I found, the only prescription that I have is uh, I do have slight yeah. hypertension. And so I take yeah. a, uh, we, we call it lisinopril. Here they have, uh, they, you can get the, uh, the lisinopril, but they have a uh, generic brand called Prisca, which is much cheaper and does, yeah. does, does just yeah, as well. You, you can. But, what, but, but what was interesting to me uh, when I first arrived here is uh you know it's like do i need to go to a doctor and get a prescription blah blah blah. i just actually carried my little cvs bottle that i brought with me from the u.s i went to the pharmacy yeah, and i showed them the bottle and just, um, and it's over the counter you know uh now the yeah. funny thing is you you buy them per per tablet uh you know you don't buy 30 a bottle of 30 you buy but pay per tablet you can buy 30 yeah. you can buy as many as you want yeah but uh yeah, but just, let me let me wrap up here. Let me wrap up here. Yeah. Uh, the going back to the online dating thing. Uh, one way to decide, you know, as I mentioned, a, a criteria for deciding where would be where your Filipina lives. If you're familiar with the Philippines and you kind of have an idea where you want to live, you can actually do your Filipina search based on 
uh, specific areas, uh, you know. So, uh, I, as Marty mentioned a couple of times, I, I think you know I highly subscribe to the idea of you know plan plan a. You're not going to figure it out in a two week vacation. You're not going to decide where you want to live over a two week vacation. You're going to have to make multiple trips, or you or if you're in a position where you can come over, spend a year. And, and, you know, travel to different areas of the Philippines. I actually put out a video a while yeah. back where yeah. you can sort of be a, no, a nomad in the Philippines until you find, yeah, yeah this yeah. is the area I mean, that I really like. If, um, yeah, since you, we, we started off with the financial aspect of it is that if you have a 401k, yeah. <laughs> it's still got money in it. <laughs> um, you can... Begin drawing on a 401k six months after your 59th birthday. So mm -hmm. if, for mm -hmm. example, you can afford to uh, withdraw twelve or $1,400 a month in your loan, um, and you want to give that a try until you're 62 to see um, if it works for you and that's what you like, and that would be a great thing. You spend a year here and see if it's for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It might be, it might not. <laughs> it's not for everybody. Well, Marty, thanks a lot for taking time. Uh, I hope this, this, the guys find this, uh, you know, uh, informative and helpful. Uh, thanks to all of you guys okay. who joined us for the live stream. If, if you, if you're watching this video after the live broadcast, uh, feel free to drop your comments, your questions, all of those kinds of things as usual. Uh, I do ask you to click that like button. If you haven't subscribed, uh, Marty, I find it very interesting in my in my statistics. Over ninety percent of my members are unsubscribed. It's like just <laughs> click the subscribe button, you know. Uh, yeah, but uh, but in any case, people on YouTube a favor: do three things: um, subscribe, share, and watch the entire video. Even if you don't watch yes. it, just don't end until you Even, know. If you, you even want to turn it off and go in the other even if <laughs> drink a cup of coffee, that's fine but let it run this course um that helps the people who, who are yeah who are if you're watching on your phone and, and and you get bored if you get bored just lay the phone down and and walk away for a minute let the video <laughs> i i don't generally ask people yeah, to do yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff uh i it's it's my job to provide entertaining content but in any case okay. uh you know the my goal and my passion for this channel has has always been uh, to provide helpful information. Uh, I don't I don't do a lot of of drama. I don't do a lot of BS. It's it's pretty straight to the point, uh, you know. And and generally, I don't talk much on things that I don't have personal experience with. I don't I don't you know I, I can't really get uh, passionate about things that I haven't personally experienced or or walked through. So generally, if I'm talking about it, it's because I'm living it or living through it or, or experiencing it personally. But, but Marty, thanks again for your time. I know you're a busy guy. And, well, thank you. Uh, really, thank really, everybody, really uh, appreciate it. Uh, I hope to have you back on, uh, okay. you know, as often as you're, as you're willing. So, all right, with that, thanks, everybody, okay. for watching. Uh, we'll see you all in right. the next video. Thanks, Marty. Enjoy your thank weekend, you. everybody. Bye now. Yes, yes, yes.